This is the Paint Tacoma Beautiful Leadership and Project Management Training. Um, this is specifically for new crew leads and site leads. Um, and the site lead position is actually a, a newer position that we just um, are trying out for this season uh, in which like newer one day crews don't necessarily have to go through all this training. They can just kind of show up to the project site and a individual volunteer is um, trained similarly to a crew lead, but just doesn't have their own crew. They can um, kind of lead that volunteer crew through their day of service. So that's partly who this um, presentation is intended for in addition to those newer crew leads. Um, so, and this is again, one of three trainings. The other two are on safety and painting and prep 101. So welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Um, as you know, I'm Mary Herman. I'm the program outreach coordinator at Associated Ministries, and I do most of the volunteer outreach and onboarding for Paint Tacoma Beautiful. Um, and this is the time in the season where volunteers are gonna be working less and less with me and more and more with Brian and Amy. And I'll let you both introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Amy Allison and I'm Director of Community Mobilization here at Associated Ministries. So my role is to oversee several programs that engage volunteers in service and Paint Tacoma is just one of those. And um, this will be my eighth summer working with Paint Tacoma. So really excited to have you all back again. Thank you. Excellent. Brian. And, I, and I'm Brian Nelson and I am the uh, only completely Paint Tacoma beautiful person here. I, they call my position is called Paint Tacoma Specialist. And uh, so when you have questions about uh, technical questions about your projects, acquiring paint, uh, how do you do what, supplies you need, anything like that, I'm your first contact. Uh, both Amy and Mary have other responsibilities to other programs. So I'm, I try to take on as much as I possibly can of the paint stuff so that it keeps it off of their tables. And I'm a seasonal worker here, so I'm here from basically the 1st of June until the money runs out at the end of September. <laughs> so I make, you know, get my numbers down because I'm your first point of contact if you have things that need to be uh, worked through or whatever. Great. So um, today's agenda, we're going to be going over a little bit of housekeeping and then I'll give a brief overview of the program. Then we'll be diving into topics around managing volunteers, working with homeowners and the project planning part of Paint Tacoma Beautiful. So just as a friendly reminder, Mostly to those of you who are watching this as a pre-recorded training. If you haven't completed our volunteer application, please do that. You can just hit pause, go to that website and just complete the required fields. It doesn't take that long. Um, and this is important because this is how we keep track of volunteer contact information. We also run background checks through this application and uh, we also keep track of your volunteer hours for funding purposes. So if you know you haven't done this yet, please go ahead and do that. And when you finish, if you could just let me know, again, mostly just talking to the folks who are watching this as a pre-recorded training. Uh, that way I can keep track of who has uh, completed this training and who hasn't. All right. So, um, I won't go too much into the overview of our program because we do um, offer that information in our volunteer orientation video, um, but I'll kind of give a little bit of context as it uh, will be relevant later in the presentation here. But Paint Tacoma Beautiful is a pretty straightforward program. We simply paint houses for low income homeowners during the spring and summer months, but it's less about, you know, what we do and more about the why and the how. So uh, many of the homeowners who we work with tend to live um, in further isolation from other folks in the community due to age, disability, or other um, limiting factors. And so Paint Tacoma Beautiful is really about bringing the community right to their doorstep. So um, we are a volunteer run program. Uh, it takes about 400 volunteers to uh, paint all the houses that we aim to each year. And Paint Tacoma Beautiful supplies 
all of the paint supplies and guidance for volunteers to um, successfully paint the house. So there are a few community impacts that I want to point out. Um, paint Tacoma Beautiful helps maintain affordable housing. So exterior painting is one of the most cost effective ways for um, homeowners to prevent further damages down the road. Um, it doesn't take much before expenses add up and homeowners may be given foreclosure notices because they can't maintain their houses. Um, another thing that Paint Tacoma does is it promotes community safety. So neighbors often begin cultivating relationships with one another when they are outside working on their homes. And when neighbors are better connected, um, there's a greater interest in looking out for the community as a whole rather than one's own property. It also reduces isolation for vulnerable homeowners, as I mentioned a few slides ago. Um, and on top of that, you know, when folks have their properties less maintained, um, you know, it can create some shame and embarrassment for them to want to invite folks over to their homes. So especially for somebody who has trouble, you know, getting out of the house, um, being able to, you know, have pride in one's own property is um, a great way for them to be able to feel more comfortable having folks over at their house. And so Paint Tacoma Beautiful is all about building community, you know, um, painting somebody's house is an act of service uh, that is so rewarding and it's a great way to connect with folks that you maybe haven't before across neighborhood lines, generations, um, and other things that might otherwise separate us. So we'll kind of dive into managing volunteers. I don't know if um, I'll kind of, this is kind of where I'll start to get input from John and Warren, but um, I kind of feel like the most successful volunteer opportunities tend to be organized, fun, and meaningful. So as a crew lead, it can be helpful to set the foundation for uh, your Paint Tacoma project by, you know, making sure we're on top of everything. We know how to utilize volunteers when they get there. Um, they're having fun while they're doing it. And we're finding ways to connect uh, what they're doing back to the, you know, the bigger picture of why we're all here um, working together on this. So um, I don't know, John and Warren, do you guys ever kind of circle up at the beginning of the day to kind of get everyone on the same page? Is that something that you tend to practice? Yeah, so when I have a crew and we show up at the, um, at the house, the, the, the first thing that we do is definitely just have a meeting and go over um, who's going to do what. You know, and um, I think as I was saying before to you, Mary, um, as a lead, I ask people what they're comfortable with. Some people don't like being on ladders. Some do. Some are shorter. Some are taller. So, so the taller people can can reach things that the short people can't. You know, um, playing to everyone's strengths and what they want to do will definitely help everybody enjoy the whole um um, activity better for sure. Yeah, I pretty much do the same, uh, but we've been doing it so long that people pretty much know their roles, but I always take the group and walk them around the house and show them what we're doing and ask for their preferences. Nice. Yeah. And you know, I think that doing this is pretty intuitive to somebody who's leading a group of volunteers, but again, this is kind of just a basic training that um, outlines some best practices that, not everyone may consider. Um, so definitely, you know, taking some time at the beginning of the day to get everyone on the same page uh, is important. Um, I, I personally, you know, love the symbolism of everyone literally circling up, um, taking some time to get to know each other, what brought them here today. Um, you know, John and Warren, for a lot of your crews, they probably already know each other, but that's not always necessarily the case, especially if we have um, additional like individual volunteers joining groups. Um, it's a great way for folks to kind of just make sure they know who who they're on the site with that day. And um, this is a great opportunity to just make sure, you know, everyone's filled out the paperwork they need to fill out. Um, they know where the bathrooms are, you know, different things like that. So we're going to watch a short video here that's going to walk you through um, what an ideal Paint Tacoma Beautiful 
uh, leader would do um, with that time in the circle at the beginning of the day. Good morning, everyone. Let's circle up. Now, we're going to go over some housekeeping before we get started. Did everyone sign in? If not, we're passing around the sign-in sheet. Did anyone not complete the emergency contact roster or the consent form? The consent form has some important guidelines for safety that we all need to follow today. So please, if you see anyone doing something unsafe, let them know. We can all get hasty sometimes, so it's important for us all to remind each other to stop, slow down, and try again. The consent form also has a box to check that allows us to use photos from today for marketing and outreach. Did anyone not give consent to have their photo taken? I didn't. No problem. What's your name? Ashley. Okay, if you take pictures today, please do not include Ashley in any of those pictures. Thank you. All right, next order of business, we're going to be prepping Miss Rosemary's house today. She has graciously allowed us to use her downstairs bathroom, so if you need to use that, please remove your shoes before entering. We can also fill up our water bottles in her kitchen sink. It's hot out today, so please drink lots of water and apply sunscreen often. We really encourage you to take breaks when you need to. Uh, we're not here to kill ourselves. Relieve your muscles, talk to each other, and build relationships. We will be taking a lunch break around 12.30 p.m., so that will be a good time to get to know each other, too. All right, now that we've got some of those logistics out of the way, I want to welcome you to this experience. Uh, let's go around and introduce ourselves. Some of us may already know each other, but just in case, let's have you share your name and what you hope to gain from today. Who would like to go first? I will. Uh, my name is Derek. And I'm looking forward to spending some quality time with my friends here and giving back to the community. Excellent. Let's hear from the next person. And I'm Lorena. I've been volunteering with Paint Tacoma Beautiful for about three years now. And what keeps me coming back year after year is the community that takes place when we all get together to help out a neighbor. We live in such an individualized community these days, it seems like everyone is on their phones and people don't know how to make eye contact anymore or say hi to each other. We're not here to just paint a house, we're here to remember what it's like to connect. Many of the homeowners who apply to our program live in isolation due to age, disability, income status, and so forth. It's not always easy to leave the house and be a part of the community. So today is about bringing the community right to their doorstep. Talk to someone you don't know today. Get to know Miss Rosemary. Be present with each other today. Our prep work today will involve tying back some of the shrubs that line the house, laying drop cloths, pressure washing, scraping, and sanding. Um, we'll also be taking some pictures. Uh, who's our shutter bug here? We'll need one person to go around and take pictures of some smiling faces. I'll do it. Great, Derek. Make sure you get some good angles. Has anyone used a pressure washer before? I have. Awesome, Ashley. We'll have you on the pressure washing. Uh, would anyone like to learn how to use a pressure washer? Alright, James. We'll pair you up with Ashley and the two of you can pressure wash. The rest of you will be tying back shrubs and laying down drop cloths. Does anyone have any questions before we get started? Excellent. Everyone follow me and I'll show you where the supplies are. Today, we're not going to have a great day. We're going to make a great day. Basically, this slide kind of just goes over the best practices that that person in the video used. Um, so she made everyone feel welcome. Um, she encouraged community building and she set some really clear expectations for the day. Um, and that's just helpful in general to volunteers because um, I don't know if you've ever been to a volunteer opportunity where you get there and it's not really clear who to talk to or where to sign your name. Um, you know, so it's just important to make sure that folks kind of have are all on the same page about how to begin the day together. Anything, Warren or John, you want to add to that? No, that all sounded good to me. Okay. 
Down in the video description here on YouTube, you'll see a corresponding link that goes with this video one uh, title. So if you want to just pause this, exit out of full screen, and click on that link, this is just kind of a short video that talks about teaching volunteers. And the reason why I included this is because after you circle up at the beginning of the day, there may be um, some volunteers who didn't take all of these trainings or maybe have no idea how to paint or anything like that. There's often times when volunteers will bring a friend or somebody who's pretty unprepared uh, for this experience and may need a little bit of direction. Anything, uh, Warren or John, you want to add to kind of how to instruct volunteers on on what to do? Right. So I actually um, watched this video Friday, um, I think it was, and, and I liked it. Um, as a lead, when you have a crew, this leads back to where actually um, engaging with people, talking with people, asking what they like, playing to their strengths. You know, um, I always have a superhero and I always have a ladder holder, you know, um, and there's just as to what everybody feels um, comfortable with. And if somebody wants to feel brave and learn something um, as a lead, I'm happy to teach them. But, you know, we also need a ladder holder and a conversationalist and someone to hand out water. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's something that I think you can find for everyone to actually do, take part in, be a part um, um, of the group and make um, a contribution. John, anything you need, you want to add to that? No, oh, our group's been together so long, I don't really have to say anything to them anymore. So throughout the day, uh, you might find that your volunteers are perhaps getting into the weeds a little bit, maybe getting a little too detail oriented. I think, John, the other day, um, you mentioned something about, you know, how being too detail oriented really isn't um, totally necessary or even possible with exterior painting sometimes because what we're worried about is really how the house looks from, you know, the road. Like if somebody's driving by, what would they think of that house? Most people aren't going to get super up close to the trim and notice, you know, a little overlap of paint. Um, so it's important as a crew lead to kind of um, give people some perspective, um, you know, and, and maximize how much you can get done in the day while also reminding yourself that, you know, building relationships is just as important as getting some things done. A lot of our programs uh, at Paint Tacoma are running concurrently, so there may not always be a staff person available to come to the site right when you need them, but we're never more than a phone call away. But because of that, having this visionary perspective can kind of help you use your best judgment in making decisions. Uh, anything folks want to add to this? Something to add here. Um, I liked what you said about not being too critical um, of things. The biggest, one of the biggest things to, to um, remember is if people aren't having a good time, they're not going to come out next year. Right. And I get a lot of people that are, are return offenders of coming to paint a house. So um, if they have fun, we all have fun, then you'll, you'll keep getting people to come back every year and it makes recruiting much easier. <laughs> And talking about the different roles that people can take on, having somebody who's responsible for hospitality or snacks and stuff like that can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And it uh, gives somebody, somebody who really doesn't want to get into the technical part of painting or, or physically can't or whatever, gives them a job that contributes to the, the whole project in a, in a kind of sideways way. Yep. Yeah. And if you're new coordinators are going to be watching this one of the biggest things i've noticed is don't expect everybody to be good at what they do <laughs> you will have really sloppy painters you will have good painters and uh all the sloppy painters we give them a roller and say do the siding the neat painters we let them do the trim but as coordinators we have to go through the entire job at the end of it and fix the spots that need to be fixed Exactly. Yeah, which uh, actually leads me to my next slide here. So volunteers are going to be looking to you for that vision 
Um, but also that positivity. So um, Warren, as you mentioned, it's important to keep the day upbeat. You know, it's, um, you know, I put that picture of the mountain in there in the last slide because, you know, painting ex outside can be a little bit grueling, especially on a hot day, um, you know, and folks are joining this opportunity for a fun way to engage with the community, but it still is, you know, it's some hard labor. And so, um, you know, just as it would be rewarding to like climb a mountain together, um, you're taking on a big project together and it's important to kind of maintain some positivity. Um, they're gonna look to you for influence as well. So part of the keeping things upbeat will be to, um, you know, include team activities throughout the day. Um, I don't know if Warren or John, you guys ever, do some, you know, have fun competitions with any of your volunteers? Do you guys do that? No. Okay. <laughs> well, we're, we're a bunch of rough neck merchant mariners. So I'm not going to tell you what we talk about on the job site. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> but yeah, fine. Whatever works for you, you know, if your crew is like Warren's crew, um, maybe the way that you keep things upbeat is a little bit different from somebody else. So, um, I don't know, I, I've been in trainings before that are really long and um, one time a trainer did a, an activity with everyone to kind of boost the mood, which was like a giant um, rock, paper, scissors standoff where you, um, everyone picks a partner to play rock, paper, scissors with. And then um, if you lose, you have to cheer on the person that beat you. And basically it turns into this giant yelling crowd and it's just kind of a fun way to boost the energy so there's different things like that Compe you know we could have competition between different sides of the house of who can get what done first you know or maybe just having the mood, mood be positive looks different to you than it would to somebody else but those are just some examples um, volunteers are going to look to you for delegation uh, most folks expect you to um, provide direction. Um, if you, you know, are not directing people, um, they might kind of wonder what they're supposed to do or feel like their time is being wasted. So it is important to um, provide direction and, and people really do expect that of you. And integrity, I mean, just doing the right thing. Like, um, like you said, John, you know, at the end of the day, like even if, or maybe it was Warren, sorry, you know, you might have some, some sloppy painters there. And as the lead, you know, it is your responsibility to kind of just make sure that, that the job is done well. You know, you can't control how everyone does everything, but, um, you know, it's important to have accountability and, um, and do, do things the right way. Anything um, you both want to add to that? Nope. It's, uh, as much as we like to work ourselves, it really is hard not to work, but the volunteers keep us so busy that we have to lead things to keep it organized. Exactly. All right. So volunteer appreciation. Um, you know, the work is hard, but uh, it's important to recognize people um, for doing the hard work too. Throughout the day, it's important to show gratitude to everyone that could be in the form of a thank you, um, or it could be, you know, noticing what they do well and tell them, you know, um, Warren, I know you mentioned it's important to play on people's strengths. And in the same way, we want to appreciate them for what they bring to the table. You know, maybe they're a hard worker, uh, maybe they're good at striking up conversations, um, or making sure people are drinking enough water, right? Or perhaps they're a very detail-oriented person, which, you know, it has its moments of strength too. So noticing the individual strengths that each person brings to this project is the foundation of the community we aim to cultivate. All right, so um, throughout the day, you've employed all of these best practices and worked really hard and it's time to circle up again and wrap up the day. Um, in my opinion, I think it's a great idea to circle up at the beginning of the day and the end of the day, because it kind of creates a daily ritual for folks to kind of get energized at the beginning and, and bring closure to the end. Um, it's a good opportunity for you to seek feedback, um, maybe on the program itself or your leadership style. And, um, you know, just, just see if anyone had any concerns throughout the day. Um, it's also a good time to, again, 
thank people and tie it back to the bigger picture of why we're all here, you know, um, contributing to somebody who couldn't otherwise afford to get their house painted. That's a big deal. Um, you know, preventing somebody from being in a situation where they might experience homelessness again. Like there's a lot of ways that we um, have a big impact, even if it just feels like we were here for four hours and, um, you know, scraped some, some siding, right? Um, anything, Warren or John, you want to add to kind of wrapping up the day with your volunteers? Well, in my experience, people kind of come and go on their own schedule and they, they're not punctual necessarily. And so that really doesn't work for our group. They know each other. They know when they like to show up. They know when they like to leave. Yeah. <laughs> as, as long as we're there for the duration is what really matters. I think I was about to ask that because I, I've seen a lot of groups. Um, sometimes they have a set start time, but then a lot of the, the, the end time will vary by the person. Um, is there anything else you do to do your, your team bonding, um, John? Uh, well, I do a lot of communicating by email so that they know what's going. We do, in fact, always start at 830 and people know that that's the start time, but that doesn't mean that's when they're going to show up. Mm -hmm. okay. And we work as long as it takes to get it done. Our particular team always tries to do the entire house in three days separated by a week on on each meeting and it's worked over the years i think in 30 years we've only had to work four days twice mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know it, it probably to some degree could be up to the crew lead like if you want that very specific start time and end time you know you can if you're just firm about setting the tone for that, it can happen, but not every crew has to operate that way. Um, and as John, you said, you know, there's plenty of ways to show appreciation to kind of um, build in group bonding throughout the day um, or even via email. So, yeah. Any so that's, that's kind of about it as far as managing volunteers in general. Um, and we'll move on to best practices for working with homeowners. Um, some of you may know Heidi, this is uh, her story. Um, essentially, Heidi had a very um, personal experience with paint Tacoma. Um, her mother passed away unexpectedly before her very first paint day. Um, and because of that, um, she had some, some really full circle experiences with paint Tacoma um, years later when she wound up painting a house for a homeowner who also lost her mother unexpectedly. Um, and since then, uh, Heidi has kind of made it a tradition to paint words of affirmation and love and encouragement onto the primer of homeowners' houses um, before they paint, obviously with their um, permission. But um, she has just a really beautiful story um, and a great example of ways that um, we often may see volunteers kind of go through this shift from seeing this as a fun way to engage with the community to, um, you know, at sometimes a very profoundly impacting experience. Um, most of the folks who volunteer with Paint Tacoma um, enjoy the relationship that they have with homeowners. And so um, I kind of just want to preface this section by emphasizing that the homeowner volunteer relationship is um, is one of the more precious parts about Paint Tacoma. I don't know, would you agree, John and Warren? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And it's not just the homeowners, it's the neighbors as well. Absolutely. When they see the area cleaned up, they tend to clean up. If it's a rundown neighborhood and this is the worst house on the block, we notice that they start cleaning up next door when they see the neighbors getting better. Exactly. So um, that said, though, there's a few things that we want to... Um, you know, just kind of be clear about. Um, while the homeowner volunteer neighborhood relationship can be um, excellent, you know, we may also run into some things that we weren't expecting. So, you know, some folks, folks may not be extremely poor in a way that we expect them to be, um, or, you know, physically disabled. Some people may have mental health issues. Um, but either way, it's important for us to refrain from judging anyone from 
um, not being able to help out, or um, especially if there are adult children who live in the home who are not helping with the project, um, you know, we just don't want to make any assumptions about, uh, you know, why they may not be helping um, or any judgments like that. So um, not all homeowners are religious either. I mean, that's pretty obvious, but um, we do uh, discourage volunteer groups from any kind of proselytizing or anything like that. Um, and, you know, as much as it can be fantastic to connect with the homeowner, you know, not everyone is the chattiest of, of people. So um, they may just, you know, be happy to kind of keep to themselves and do their own thing. So anything, Warren or John, you wanted to add to that? What you said really happens. There have been several times where the homeowners have been extremely difficult and yeah. it's it's our job as coordinators to explain to our volunteers that we can't control their life circumstances. We're here to do this job and to leave a positive impression. But at least 90% of the time, they're fantastic. But we do have to be prepared for that 10% that can make it tough. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I always, um, I always use that initial meeting where I go out myself and maybe have one person come with me and and I meet them and I talk with them and I listen to them and we choose a paint color sometimes if I can get the swatches that day um, and I use that time to just listen and do the best I can to get to actually know them and if they're a chatty person or not and to hedge expectations you know um, and just get a sense of of what um, we're we're in for and who we're helping and you know um i include that in my brief with my team you know and it's gone well you know i go out ahead of time and i just kind of have a sense of uh who we're helping and we, we just work from there so on that note too um whoever the homeowner is, it is really important to get their permission. If you need to throw anything away, move anything on their property or clear brush away from the house. Um, you know, especially too, if we're dealing with somebody who may have a mental health issue um, or not even, you know, having your personal things moved around like that by strangers can be, um, and you know, an unusual experience um, and one that might make people feel uncomfortable. So again, it's just really important to get people's permission on that. Um, it can also be helpful to appoint one of your volunteers as a homeowner liaison. Uh, this person would check in with the volunteer each day that you're on the site, you know, communicate with them what your plans are, ask for permi permission to, you know, move anything around or what, whatever you need to do. Um, and the reason why that person may not be the crew lead is because oftentimes crew leads are busy managing other volunteers or doing other things. So, um, but it is helpful to have it as the same person each time. That way the, you know, the information is um, just going to one person versus multiple people. And um, we might run into um, miscommunication that way. Um, it's possible too that sometimes some homeowners may be, um, you know, a little bit micromanagey um, in the way that they interact with volunteers. Um, they might be a little bit picky or um, dissatisfied with work. So it's important just to keep in mind that those folks are primarily looking out for, you know, most likely their biggest asset, which is their house. And, um, you know, if you, if you have any issues, don't ever hesitate to call Brian um, or me or Amy. Um, we're happy to support you in, in having a good relationship with the homeowner. Yeah, yeah I, I always, oh, go ahead, Brian. I'm going to say, whenever there gets anything, it's a, any kind of a difficult or intense communication, send that over to us. Give us a call and let us deal with that. You're, you're volunteering to paint houses. You're not volunteering to uh, do social work and, and, uh, and uh, do that kind of, uh, deal with that kind of negativity. So, uh, you know, like, like Mary said, don't hesitate to call and let us talk about that with the clients. Yeah, and, um, you know, I mean, even if a homeowner does challenge us in those ways, um, you know, it's important to, important to 
practice patients and um, really it's, it's a helpful way for us to uh, better understand their situation. Um, and again, you know, it's always a matter of communication. Exactly. You know, and as, um, you know, as John said, 90% of the time, the homeowners are just fantastic to work with. And it is, you know, the main reason why people come back year after year. Um, and we do see volunteers kind of go through this transformation, you know, when they realize like, this is somebody's home, you know, this is a, it's a big deal. And I don't know if you've ever lived with roommates, but um, it can always be a little bit of an intimate experience seeing somebody, you know, in the place that they live and sleep and to care for that shelter, you know, the shelter that keeps them in from the wind and the rain, like that's, um, that's meaningful. So it's, um, you know, there's kind of this arc, you know, and there's some, maybe some challenges um, along the way, depending on, you know, who you're working with, but overall it's, it's a pretty wonderful experience. All right, so we'll move on to the project management side of things. The first obvious stage is one that probably most folks have already completed, which is really just signing up. Um, that involves, you know, the online volunteer application, securing their crew members, determining their commitment level, um, setting project dates, and attending these very trainings. If you're a one-day crew, you know, as many volunteers as you can bring to the table is great, and we will happily find a place for you to, um, you know, help out. Uh, but yeah, for folks who are adopting a house, it sounds like um, you won't really know exactly how many volunteers you'll need for each stage of the project until you get there, do a walk around, um, you know, and that's, you know, that's where Brian comes into play. If you're a new crew member, um, or I'm sorry, if you're a new lead and, um, you know, you're trying to gauge how many people you'll need for this or that, um, you know, that's where Brian's a great resource to kind of help you plan out that project a little bit better. And that's partly why we give you a choice of houses when we're when you're taking assignments is we'll lay out several houses in front of you and give you a little bit of input into that as to what job is uh, too big or too small or fits your crew best. Yeah, being uh, being a team lead when I go out and first look at the house, you know, pictures do lots, but nothing or places actually being there and walking around and leads should um, ex expect with permission of the homeowner to trim back some shrubs or some tree branches and make room and make things easy. Um, and then, yeah, seeing the house, you know, you can kind of eyeball if it's going to be a lot of pressure washing, a little bit of pressure washing, a lot of scraping, um, a lot of, scraping you know we will typically have anywhere from 15 to 20 people total available to commit to help us so for us it's real important to utilize our people to the best of their ability and get the most done when we have them um the vast majority don't come out for a second day so um being able to know you know okay this is this is a three person one day scrape or is it a 10 person two day scrape you know um but a lot of times if you've got so many people doing the same thing you find a lot of people standing around because there's just not enough square footage to keep everybody busy um so you just as as um, a team lead you just kind of gauge that on the house that you've chosen and hopefully knowing some of your people um i'll use my go get our hard workers for the, for the scraping and the pressure washing, and then I'll bring everybody else in for paint day. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, next you'll wanna determine your commitment level. So um, I guess I could probably have put this one a little bit before the last slide, but um, it's helpful to know if you want to adopt a whole house from start to finish or just help out for one or two days. Um, after that, you can um, select your project dates. So a lot of folks who adopt houses tend to, um, you know, say they want to work every Saturday in August. You know, that's fine. Or um, if you are a one or two day um, crew, then you know you can kind of just pick the days that work best for you. And as staff, we'll do our best to plug you in, um, you know, to the right project from there. 
So if you are adopting a house, those could be consecutive days, you know, three to five consecutive days, or like I said, you know, over the course of a few weeks. Um, it's important not to schedule it too late into the season um, because then you kind of run into some barriers with potential rain, um, things like that. So um, it's important to kind of think ahead and try and give yourself as much time as possible. Also, summer schedules tend to fill up really fast too. So if you want to, you know, have the best lock on your volunteers doing it, scheduling those dates ahead of time is helpful. I would add to, I would add to that. Um, if you are a one day crew and generally we can, what we try to do is we try to make sure we accommodate a house that works with your crew size and skill level, as well as the dates that you're available. What we're not always able to promise is that we'll have a house ready at the stage that you're hoping for. So if you pick a certain date and you want to paint, um, we will pick a house that works for your cruise size and skill level and that fits your dates, but that house may not be ready to paint at that point. It may still be in prep stages. Um, so just want to let people know that, that it's, we're not always able to guarantee everything that you're looking for. What we do do is we do provide um, for you to select copies of the photos that we've taken of the house, as well as the technical assessment. So you can review that. Um, and if you do want to take a look at it before you make a final decision, that is fine too. But it gives you a chance to review it. Um, and we kind of, we look at the criteria that you're looking for in a house and what skills you come with, et cetera. And then we make some decisions and say, here's some good possibilities of projects that work for you as a crew. And then you can choose from there. Okay. And we also like to coordinate the working days with the homeowners. <clears throat> and that's something for a crew leader to communicate, figure out what days are gonna work uh, for the homeowner as well as for the crew and, and do the best we can to accommodate everybody's needs. All right, so um, stage two would be project planning. Um, that kind of involves, um, as Amy said, matching with a house, contacting the homeowner, requesting supplies, coordinating with your crew members. So um, project matching is um, for folks who are adopting a home, typically we'll give you, you know, a selection of a few houses you can choose from that might match your, your crew size, your commitment level, um, all that good stuff, and, you know, your skill and experience. Um, and then for, um, for those one or two day crews, Amy, do we typically give them choices or is that something we just assign to people? Um, it depends. Um, if they're, if they want a choice, um, we'll give them a choice. If some of them say, just put us wherever. And mm -hmm. so we'll just take a look and see, okay, what makes sense for this crew? Again, looking at things like size, um, of, you know, the, the size in terms of number of the people on the crew and their skill level, we'll look at what makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes crews also have some, um, want something in a certain geographic criteria, uh, just cause it's easier for the get, them to get to. So we'll also try to accommodate that. Um, so I guess my point is we'll do our best to make sure it fits, but we're not able to accommodate necessarily 100% of the criteria you're looking for, but we'll try to accommodate multiple facets of what you want and what will work for you as a crew. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like these pictures too, because it also shows, you know, that a really good match was made between these volunteers and this homeowner um, who are all affiliated with the military. So it's kind of neat to see, you know, this homeowner as a World War II vet working with um, folks in the military, um, you know, and it's just kind of a neat match that was made on a more of a cultural level. All right, so contacting the homeowner, this is just a step that is only for folks who are adopting a house. But um, as Warren mentioned a few slides ago, um, making that initial visit with the homeowner is an important step in the process as a crew lead to not only have them complete some of this um, wonderful paperwork, but to really do a walk around the house, kind of check it out, think about, you know, how many people you'll need, what you, what order of um, prep you'll need to um, plan for, and then, you um, bringing some pruners with you or um, other tools to be able to kind of cut back some of the brush ahead of time, um, things like that. So um, the paperwork that's involved here is pretty straightforward. Um, there's just the homeowner reference form, um, which tells them, you know, the contact information for the crew that's going to be painting their house, the paint crew schedule that just outlines what days you're going to be working on their house. 
um, the first visit questionnaire kind of walks uh, you as a lead through um, the different things you'll want to look at when you're doing that initial walk around the house. Um, and then the paint order form is um, how you will kind of work with the homeowner to pick out a paint color and, and sign off on that color. Anything folks want to add on this one? I will add having that signature is pretty important um, because they um, otherwise, uh, unfortunately, because we can, we're not always always able to make changes after the fact, um, there have been occasions where homeowners change their mind and it's before we've been, you know, before we've started the project and we can go, okay, we can see if we can swap out the paint for a different color. Um, but you want to do, you do want to just confirm this is definitely the color that the colors that the homeowners chosen by getting their signature on that form. Um, I will add to, and I, I don't know if we've always made this clear, but uh, we have these paint color swatches and um, we need them back. So after they've picked the color, we need them back because we don't have one per homeowner. I think some of them have kept them. The homeowners have held on to them and we haven't always gotten them back. So please return them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you're saying before, um, Mary, you know, when you make your initial visit, um, it's not about just be, I mean, paperwork is important. It has to get done for sure. Um, but you want to make them feel like you're listening to them. Um, you aren't just there to sign your name on a piece of paper and listen to them. Um, and then throughout the, the, uh, the whole process, when you're, you know, on days you plan for, but it's raining, just always communicate. Lots of communication, what's going on, no surprises. Um, and it's their home, you know, like you are uh, saying before, it's, it's their largest asset it's where they spend the the uh, most time and it's their home so just be uh, aware of that yeah. yeah thanks for bringing that up warren um you're right i mean a big part about paint tacoma beautiful is that relationship that volunteers build with the homeowner so taking some time to sit down with them hear their story it's a great way to you know begin to cultivate those relationships across neighborhood lines across generations and um and of course, get some paperwork done and a little bit of prep work possibly. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that you brought that up. So here's an optional video that tells you how to order paint. Again, this information is included in the crew lead handbook, so you don't necessarily need to watch this. But if you're curious and want to dive in deeper to some of the details, feel free to follow the link down in that description of the video. Just some input on, on um, paint if it if it matters or not, what my kind of plan is, is, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good about nagging Amy and Brian for paint swatches almost the, almost the day after I choose a house. And then um, I get out there, I see the house and, and I make a plan. Um, and then if I'm able to, after my first meeting, I'll submit my paint order, even if, you know, I'm not planning on painting for a week or two, maybe um, just so because that's kind of the one thing I feel I can't control because you guys are busy and you can only get paint at, at um, certain times. So, you know, um, I have the space where I can get the paint a week or two ahead of time. So it'll just sit, it'll wait and it's not going bad. And then when it's not raining and I have the people, we just hit the ground running and I'm not waiting on anybody. Uh, that's a good plan too. If you've got the place to put it, um, if not, if you you know if you want to wait until the you know pick up the morning of the project, uh, we can do that, or we can deliver it to the project. There's lots of ways around it. So, well, one of my first questions to the homeowner is, I ask them, "Do you have a place I can store paint?" But I take it straight from you to there. Yeah. Yep. The, other thing, the other thing I would add in terms of picking up supplies or paint is please make sure you check with us and arrange a time to do it. Um, the thing that we don't want that, that has happened sometimes is that um, somebody comes and shows up without us know if we're out in the field somewhere and they're asking our receptionist, who's usually got a full, a full lobby full of clients needing services to help them get their supplies. And she doesn't know where it is, what you need, and she's too busy to help. 
and that leaves everybody frustrated. So please make sure you just check in with me or Brian in a range of time and let us know when you're going to, um, when you need to pick stuff up so that we can be, make sure that we're there to help you get it when you arrive. All right. So supply request and pickup. Um, some important things to note is that, um, you know, we've talked about this already, but planning out each work party is really important. So if, you know, you're adopting a home and you know you want to complete the project, you know, in one month, let's say, um, you know, parse out those days and see, you know, what's going to need to happen on which day so that you can stay on schedule and know exactly what tools and supplies you'll need. There are some limited supplies with Paint Tacoma Beautiful. Um, we're generally able to provide everybody with the amount of paintbrushes and you know, sandpaper and things like that, that they'll need. Um, but for ladders and pressure washers, those are some bigger ticket items that we'll need you to um, reserve ideally about a week ahead. Um, so if you know you're gonna be pressure washing on a very specific day, um, let us know as soon as you can so that um, we can keep track of where those pressure washers are going and when. Um, and especially too with, you know, pressure washers, if you can take it for the day and then return it at the end of the day or the next day, um, that's most helpful for us so that we don't forget about it, leave it out of sight, and then wonder where it is. Um, other things, Amy, you wanted to add to this one? Yeah, I will add. Um, so generally, because we um, a lot of our suppliers are providing us things at a discount, or um, we can generally get things cheaper than a lot of you. And so what that means is that we ask that you not, um, we can't generally reimburse you if you purchase something out of pocket. So um, occasionally we need to because there's something special that we weren't able to obtain and you're able to obtain it from somebody um, and we will reimburse, but you do need to check with us first and confirm that with us first before you make that purchase. Otherwise we can provide you with a donation um, receipt, but in general, we don't reimburse. Because um, so if you need extra things, please check with us first, because usually we are able to obtain them for you, um, whether that's a special supply um, for the house, the particular house itself, or whether that's just extras of the supplies we already provide, such as extra rollers or extra brushes or whatever. Um, the other thing is just um, this year with COVID-19, um, we've always provided a handful of N95 um, masks, face masks for the folks working on the prep stages. So as you know, N95 masks are not really available anymore. However, what we've done this year is we've been able to um, purchase a number of cloth masks and we are providing every member of your crew with cloth masks. There are some that are in some smaller or larger sizes. So if you have some folks who you know um, have a bigger uh, face or maybe a beard and then, or if you have children on your crew and need some larger or smaller sizes, we can accommodate that. Um, and of course, t-shirts. So. Please let us know if you need t-shirts or if you need face masks and how many you're going to need and what sizes. And those are all going to be yours to keep. The other, the other, oh, awesome. I love yeah. it. I love it. The other supplies that we're going to be um, providing, um, we've already provided these in prior years to handle working with um, lead paint, but um, it is the shoe covers. And then um, we're gonna be supplying you with an eight ounce spray bottle of hand sanitizer and um, sanitizing spray and uh, paper towels. And that's to help you wash down tools or if you enter the homeowner's house and use the restroom, wash down any surfaces you touch. Um, so every crew is gonna get, um, get that from us. And um, I think that's it. Brandy, anything else you wanna add in terms of what we're doing about COVID? Uh, no, I think you got it covered. Something I'll add real quick is just that, um, you know, especially for one day crews, really all you need to remember about this slide is um, it's helpful to just let us know how many people are going to be there so that we can set aside the amount of t-shirts you're going to need, the amount of, you know, paintbrushes or um, scrapers, things like that. Um, and for, uh, and, and for those one day crews, you know, if you can arrange a pickup at our offices, that's super helpful. Um, if not, we will get those supplies to the site for you. Um, but it is, you know, just let us know what you have the capacity for, if you can pick them up and return them, or if you need our support with that. Um, so that's, that's pretty much all I'll say on this one. 
Um, one of the things that, that I was going to add, if, if there's something odd that I need or like uh, I have my own pressure washer, I have a big ladder. So for the sake of, of making um, ladders and pressure washers available to, to other crews, um, I really have no issue using my own. Um, same thing where if I need to prune something, you know, I happen to have some stuff. So, you know, I really have um, no issue using some of my things versus waiting on, on associated ministries because they're out of something, the project, you know, lags. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate that too. Um, yeah. And if any, sure that they're on good repair and, and safe to work with. Of course. Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. And if any of you are um, new crews that are adopting a home, um, if you ever need help, you know, figuring out what supplies you would need or should you be using when, how to plan out any of your work days. Um, again, that's, you know, Brian's a great resource for that. You can always call him up and, and chat with him and kind of plan, plan that out with an expert. So, okay. So uh, coordinating your crew members would be the next uh, step in this phase. Um, just, you know, communicating with them what to wear, what to bring, where to show up, um, when to show up, what to expect. Those sorts of things are super helpful. Um, and as we mentioned in our safety training, um, you know, if anyone wants to bring what they need for their comfort and safety, that's ideal. That could be, you know, sunscreen, hat, snacks, um, you know, first aid kit. We encourage that. Um, so those are just some things to think about when coordinating your crew members. All right, stage three, project A, is this is what we're all here for. Um, but there's a little bit of volunteer paperwork that will need to take place first and then the prepping and painting. Um, so we kind of talked about um, at the very beginning of the presentation, the importance of opening up the day with a circle. Not only is that great for community building, but it's also helpful to remind folks to um, complete the necessary paperwork. So, um, there are three pieces of paper that folks need to fill out. Um, the first is their daily timesheet. So this will be something they'll complete every time they are on the site and every time they leave the site. Um, the reason why this is important is a few reasons. Um, one of them is that we do keep track of our volunteer hours this way for funding purposes. Um, we also have liability insurance, so it's um, very helpful to know who was on site and when for that. And then also, um, because we're going to be volunteering in the midst of COVID-19, it's helpful to have this for some tracking purposes to know, you know, if anyone were to, um, to get COVID-19, um, we may have some records of, you know, who they were interacting with that day. The emergency contact roster that's just a one-liner where you fill in your um, emergency contact information. Um, and then we have a consent and safety guidelines form. Um, that's something every volunteer is going to need to sign once to um, just consent to confidentiality practices, um, our photo release, um, safety practices, things like that. So, um, the emergency contact and the consent and safety guidelines, every volunteer only needs to complete that once, but the timesheets need to be completed every single day as volunteers come to and leave the site. Um, but I would just encourage all crew leads to make this a daily practice, um, even throughout the day, just reminding folks. I know John said that most people show up at the same time, but various people, you know, leave at different times. So just as often as you can, just remind people to sign out, sign in. You know, if you haven't completed this form, make sure you complete it. Um, and that's super helpful to us as staff. So as Amy was probably gonna say, um, keeping all that paperwork in one place is important. Is that what you're gonna say? Well, it's, it's in a folder. Um, yeah. It already comes in a folder. So at the end, just return the folder to us with that paperwork. Yeah, we give all the crew leads one giant folder um, where you can keep everything um, and just return the entire thing to us back at the end with all the completed forms. Um, and that's, that's how we'll get it back to us. Uh, return your supplies as well and send us all your beautiful, wonderful photos, um, which I will share with you now. Look at that. 
Um, so when taking photos, it's super lovely to have some smiling faces, people in pairs or groups of threes. Um, you know, we get a lot of great photos, but a lot of times people aren't looking at the camera. Oh, there's John. That was your hard house. It was. So um, we appreciate all the photos and the staff will try and come by and take some photos of you all as well. In general, for folks who are watching this as a pre-recorded training, again, don't forget to let me know when you finish this training so I can keep track of who's who's taken it and who hasn't. Um, but that about does it. Um, we appreciate you all for being here and um, especially to uh, Warren and John, uh, your guys' input has been uh, fantastic. So we appreciate it, yeah. thank you. I, I would ditto that. I was gonna say it was phenomenal. Just the things you shared and um, just the great suggestions. Uh, we appreciate it so much. And, and thank you so much uh, for all you've done over all these years, as well as being here today.